So I've been looking forward to making this video for quite some time and this video is all about drawing. I'm going to share everything I know about drawing, all my tips and techniques to help you improve your skills, yes, but also to help you with life because I truly believe in the healing powers of our creativity. Drawing as a companion on our journey through life. We were all born creative souls, yet many of us are too scared to pick up a pencil and learn to draw. It is a most basic way of communicating our experiences, surroundings and processing our emotions. But Wendy, I can't draw, I hear you say. Well, let's sort that out first. So firstly, I truly believe that anyone can learn to draw. You've probably heard the phrase, practice makes perfect. Do it regularly and do it lots. And yes, that all helps, but we need the incentive of progress, of actually being proud of some of our efforts and accomplishments. How can we feel that the fastest? What is the quickest possible way, the biggest game changer, to get from I can't, to I might, to I can? And the continuation of dipping between those three forever, by the way. <laughs> this video is a guide to drawing. How do I start? How do I learn to draw? How do I get better and improve my drawing skills? I'll be sharing all my secrets for improving in the fastest possible way with a no pressure or self judgment approach so that you enjoy the process of learning. I'll share my top secret tool for drawing and my best book recommendation. Try saying that three times quickly. We'll talk a little bit about supplies. What stuff do I recommend? We'll also think about the formalities of drawing and what art theory do we need to know about. I'm also going to share a start to finish drawing process and you're welcome to join in so we can work together in our sketchbooks. And I'll be busting five common misconceptions about drawing. So what are the benefits of drawing? It's a self-expressive meditative process as well as giving us a sense of achievement in learning a new skill, it also has other hidden benefits as well. It improves our physical, mental and emotional health, recharges our immune system, triggers the parasympathetic nervous system and relaxes us. It helps to process our thoughts and emotions and also helps to tell our stories. It teaches us courage and patience and brings us into the present moment a great mindfulness practice that can be deeply meditative. It even forms changes in your brain and forms new neural pathways. Human beings are made to communicate with ourselves, each other and the wider world around us. So drawing and creating art is part of this conversation. It's part of sharing our experiences and an important way of telling our stories. I believe it goes deeper than that. We can get quiet. We learn courage. We then begin to have a relationship with our creativity and our creations. We learn through the journey. It accompanies us on our pathway through life and makes us less lonely. Doing it helps us process, stay present, heal. We connect to others' creativity. We connect to our higher power, inner and outer. It's social without meeting or talking to anyone. It's spiritual without a need to affiliate with a religion. It has blurry edges between all the worlds. Mindful, meditative, magical, sinking us into our parasympathetic nervous systems. We are able to understand aspects of each other without saying a word. It connects us because no matter what we make, we are all creative and therefore are able to communicate through it. So here's my best personal drawing advice with tips, techniques, all my secrets. And then a little later in the video, I'll be busting my five common misconceptions about drawing. And I really think those will help you improve in the fastest possible way. And if you've got any additional tips, please feel free to leave me a comment down below and then we can all share all your gems of wisdom. I will mention at this point as well, all about warm ups. It's really useful to stretch your hands and arms and wrists and shake them out and practice using your whole arm, shoulder and different pencil holds to get comfy at the different angles you'll need. If you want to go through a whole warm-up process with me, I've got a whole separate video about it, so I won't go into too much detail here. You're basically going to build up a variety of lines and marks that you can make, a muscle mobility and memory, and try out different art supplies. It's a really fun meditative process. 
I personally recommend doing it before every drawing session as I truly think it helps us improve more quickly. So here's my 12 drawing guidelines, all my tips and techniques. Number one, inspiration. So my first tip is to find out what you love and do that. Follow that path first or you will get fed up and frustrated early on and probably give up. Collect together a reference folder, physical or digital, or a pile of books with post-it notes in of what inspires you. Pin it to a cork board or take to an inspiration wall nearby where you draw. Number two, do challenge yourself to learn the formalities of drawing, the language of drawing, learning the tools of your trade so you can put them in your drawing toolbox. Learn about all the elements of drawing. We're talking line, mark making, strokes, shape, form, light, values, movement, edges, composition, texture. Any basic book can help with the art theory side of things. Build up your repertoire of expertise. Number three, don't overthink or complicate it with the question of what shall I draw? Draw whatever is around you. Copy, trace, build up your muscle memory and momentum. Just get started. And I know sometimes it's easily done and you sat there with your sketchbook and you don't know what to draw. So here's some ideas for those times. Set up a still life of any kind and draw that. Try room based themes. So for example, go into your kitchen and collect some kitchen items. You can set up a group of items or just pick one. Or you can draw straight from life, a corner of a room, a view from a window, across the sofa at friends and family or in a cafe out and about as you grow in confidence. You can draw from photos that you like and it doesn't have to be copyright free images, it's just for practice. You can draw from imagination. You can draw everything and anything. People, landscapes, urban landscapes, common objects, still lives. Repeat and change medium often. With practice, you'll start to see things differently and you'll start to think like an artist. Do outline drawings, tonal studies. Live and breathe a new way of seeing, it's magical. And you'll notice things that you never saw before. Do try some weird sounding exercises to get out of your head. So by that I mean getting into your right hemisphere, the right side of your brain. Draw things upside down or with your non-dominant hand. Do it so you don't take your pencil off the page. Try some really quick timed exercises. Try a moving subject matter. Draw light to dark and dark to light. And try working on dark paper, even black paper, with a white crayon or pastel. Change drawing materials so that you use a felt tip pen or a crayon and then you can't erase. I know, scary, but good for us. Trying different drawing materials is great because you find out what you like and what feels natural to you. You can also try some negative space exercises. Number five, do give yourself permission to make bad art. This is a really important point. You are not going to love everything. Accept it early on and move on. Become fearless, let go of the fear and perfectionism. Fear paralyzes us. This isn't about perfection, do it for the process. You won't always like your end results, but since this isn't about the final result, try to let go of that thought right at the start. Number six, treat your sketchbook as a playground for creative development, self-discovery and self-improvement. Play, practice, experiment, explore. Discover a whole new world of possibility. Allow yourself to create freely. Try not to put pressure on yourself, especially when things aren't looking as you would like. Just keep going with no harsh self-judgments, no comparing yourself unfairly to others. Number seven, try to make it a habit or a regular practice. Forming a routine or ritual if you are a routine kind of person. And if not, just fit it into your day for at least 15 minutes. Fly Lady says, you can do anything for 15 minutes. I've always remembered that. Be regular if possible, but don't beat yourself up if you fall behind your own expectations. Focus, try your best. Pick a time when you have energy. It takes energy to build your stamina, to increase the time you can sit and concentrate for. Find your cheats, ways to make it really easy for yourself. Try some timed exercises of 2, 5, 10 and 15 minutes to build up your confidence and drawing stamina so you can focus for longer periods of time and it's fun. 
It's something you can do every day to build up your practice and gets you out of your perfectionist mode. A chance to play and get messy and remind yourself why you wanted to learn to draw in the first place when things become too serious. Don't get stuck in the expectations or self-judgment. Number eight, blank page fear. Let's talk about that for a minute. Art takes courage. Or as Henri Matisse said, creativity takes courage. Be your own best supporter on this quest. No harsh judgments. Do critique your progress, but don't be mean. Give yourself time, space and grace to learn. If you do this consistently, your courage will have the chance to grow and your fear will diminish over time. Number nine is my best book recommendation, which is Drawing on the Right Side of Your Brain by Betty Edwards. Try some of the exercises in there. You might already have a copy of the book, and if not, try and get hold of one. I got my copy secondhand for just a few pounds. Whatever your level of expertise, from beginner to experienced, you will definitely learn new things every time. So this is the book I'm talking about and I just wanted to show you a couple of things on the inside. Some of the examples of improvements that the students have made. So for example, it shows you the before and after. So this side is some of the students' work before they applied her instructions and then it shows the progress. And it's absolutely amazing and really inspiring. So you, if your drawings look like these ones, it gives you hope and aspiration to really improve and there's loads and loads of different tips from different artists and experts in here as well she includes lots and lots of tips from other people in here as well which i really really like there's some more looks and befores and afters she's gathered together so many quotes and little gems of wisdom from all over the place and included them in the book and i and i really love that so this one is by Robert Henry from The Art Spirit. If a certain activity such as painting becomes the habitual mode of expression, it may follow that taking up the painting materials and beginning work with them will act suggestively and so presently evoke a flight into the highest state. I absolutely love that. And the same goes for drawing. Anyway, special mention to this book. If you have any favorite drawing books, please do leave a comment down below because I'd love to see and then we can all share our favourites. Yes. Number 10 is my secret tool for drawing, the precision eraser, which is taking away lines. It's very, very helpful. You can also use a precision blade or exacto knife. I know depending on the materials we use, we can't always erase, but if you are using pencil, then a rubber is a most useful tool. It also helps with the fear. So if you've still got the fear, then working with an erasable art supply can really help. Number 11, let's talk space. Create a safe physical space for yourself. Somewhere that feels just right for creativity. Comfortable, with the right light. Perhaps you like an angled table. Perhaps you like to sit with your sketchbook on your lap. Whatever it looks like for you. You can create sacred rituals as well around the activity of drawing. Lighting candles and incense. Having crystals. Perhaps a few sentimental objects or your favorite oracle deck or poetry book. Alternatively, you can go outside, you can have a plain air drawing date in nature, picnic blanket, park bench, sat in a cafe, it's your choice. But drawing in nature gives us time to pause with smells, sights and sounds etc and transforms your reality into a magical pause away from the chaos and overwhelm. Number 12, last but not least of my guidelines is to simplify and perfect your art kit. Think about your favourites. I know we have endless options, but my major tip is to keep it as simple as possible. So let me just show you my favourite art supplies. My minimal kit that I can take anywhere. And in fact, I can have an even smaller kit than this. So my current drawing book is a Moleskine sketchbook, artist sketchbook. It's the one with the purple label. So that's the one I'm currently using. So it's quite small, so it can fit in my bag and I can take it anywhere if I want to. The reason I'm loving this sketchbook so much at the moment is because the paper's really smooth and so it can be a problem you know when you rubber smudges and it ingrains into the page that can be the issue but if you've got bumpy paper like mixed media paper or watercolour paper cold press for example then you're going to get bumpy pencil lines so on here you can have really really smooth 
line work and I'm really enjoying the surface of this and it's an off-white as well. It's not actually as lovely as it used to be. The older Moleskines were better but yeah that's the one I use. I like the size and I love the paper. So here's my kit. Let's just empty it out and show you what I've got. This is key. This is a pencil sharpener that does a long point. So by that I mean when you sharpen it you get more lead showing so you can work you know with your pencil on the side this helps with a variety of mark making and shading etc so that's really good and it also has a little teeny tiny pencil sharpener here for these kind of pencils so the gripper ones you know where the lead comes out so you can really sharpen you can see there i've sharpened it this one's by faber castell james got it for me and it's really thin and I, I find it really nice to hold so I just tuck the lead in when it's uh, traveling around. Let me just show you how that works then so you just put it into there to sharpen the point and if I open, hang on I'll get rid of the mess first, you can see I've got my two pencil sharpeners for the long point, you do them in order and then my little mini ones for the little skinny skinny ones as well. So what other types of pencil do I have? I have, these are by Faber-Castell. A very good friend called Alison bought me these over the lockdown. I was very financially challenged and had lost all my income and she kindly sent me these. So I have three in my, in my pencil case of different hardnesses, if you like. So find the ones you like. I think an HB is really nice just to start with and draw and have a B as well at a minimum. I have two types of mechanical pencil. This one's by Faber-Castell and you have an eraser on this end. So that's really handy. So you can literally just sort of take your sketchbook and your pencil and you've got a rubber with you. Yeah, so that can be a really super minimal kit. I kind of found this one quite grippy, quite fat to hold. So I've also got this thinner one, which I personally get on better with. It also has a little rubber at the end. This one's by Tiki. It's a rotring, 0.7 mine is, and you've got a nice fine lead for drawing. Spare leads as well is always handy. And this one is water reactive, so it's really fun. So you can do your drawing and then go over it with a wet brush and then it'll smudge and smush and add some tonal values. This is a 2B by Faber-Castell, but I'm not sponsored or affiliated with Faber-Castell. It just happens to be a really nice brand that I've got. You know, like I said, because of my friend buying me them in the lockdown and so they've lasted me a long time. I've got some clips which are always handy for pegging pages down especially if you're out and about and it's a bit windy and then it's worth just talking about my rubbers as well my erasers so I've got this fantastic precision eraser this one's by Tombow and it's the mono eraser and I've also got some refills for it as well so they look like this press here and then you can get an extension on your rubber Mine's a bit dirty, as usual. A lot of my rubbers are. And then I've got a putty rubber, which is really handy. So you can mould it into different shapes and, you know, to really get in there. And it's really fun to draw with as well. So you can actually draw with an eraser as well. And then just a bog standard, normal, hard eraser. Again, I need to clean mine. Yes. Mm. And then I also have one drawing pen. I personally really like this brown one. It's a 0.5. So it's quite a fine one, but not too tiny. This one is by Unipin and it's called the Fine Line and it's water and fade proof. I do have other pens and pencils, but that's my basic kit. So while I've been making this video, I thought of five big myths about drawing and I'd like to bust those for you right now. Number one, practice makes perfect. Well, no. Not completely. Of course, repeating and practice is going to mean improvements, but in order for this to work, you have to push yourself out of your comfort zones. So it's not just about repetition. Allow yourself to make that bad art. It's how you learn from your mistakes. It will self-motivate you to improve. So try difficult subjects. Try things that you don't think you can do. You don't have to show or tell anyone. It's just between you and your sketchbook. Myth number two. You have to wait for the inspiration to strike. No, don't sit thinking about it, just start. Picasso famously said, inspiration exists, but it has to find you working. So don't think, just do. And this is where warm-ups can be really helpful as well. 
Myth number three, don't trace or copy. I say yes, do it. It helps so much to get a feel of how things relate or fit together. It helps us problem solve. It shows up things we perhaps wouldn't see or certainly not as quickly. It builds a muscle memory for us to tap into whenever we need it. And a quick note about copyright issues, it's not an issue if it's just for you and your sketchbook. It's absolutely fine if it's not for commercial purpose. And you can even post it on your social media. You can credit the artist that you've copied from. People will probably tell anyway. So copy away. It's a really good way to learn. Myth number four. I should draw lots of different things. Well, yes and no, not necessarily. I think if you draw the same thing every day, it's a really useful exercise. It adds a real depth to your learning and it will show your progress really clearly. Let me compare to when I was learning yoga. I did the same routine every day and I could really see my progress. Rather than learning a new pose every day, I wouldn't have had a direct comparison. I wouldn't have known how far I was progressing. And it also builds muscle memory, so it connects the neural pathways quicker than anything else. The journey of doing this will probably lead you to unexpected places. You may realise what you do actually want to draw and paint, and this can ultimately lead your subject matter and even help you find your own style. And you might never have found that road had you not done this repeating exercise. And finally, let's bust myth number five. Only draw what you see. I know we need to draw what we see and do our observational sketches, but we also need to draw what we know. Your knowledge of certain subject matter will grow as your muscle memory does. So use this information, tap into it. For example, say if the light is wiping out part of a face you are drawing, but you know where the structure of the cheekbone should be, but you can't see it. Feel free to draw it in. You are also completely allowed to use artistic license wherever you see fit to improve your compositions if what is actually there won't work on your paper. Think outside the box, or preferably get rid of the box altogether, so that you are free to utilise all your growing portfolio of tools and skills and discern which ones are appropriate into each drawing you make. Please do feel free to leave your own tips and techniques as well in the comments below so that we can all share ideas. And you can share your progress and your own creations on Facebook or Instagram. You can tag me or you can use the hashtag createwithtug. Tug standing for the unexpected gypsy, but I shortened it because it's easier. And then it becomes a community, we're not on our own and we can all see what each other is doing and celebrate. Yes. Because you're really not alone and you might think some of your fears are silly but they're not we all have them if i had a teleport i could come into your little creative space right now through here and then sit next to you and keep you company and encourage you i wish i could do that technology hasn't quite got there yet though has it i've been drawing since i was a little girl dreaming and drawing from observational drawing in my garden and copying my favorite holly hobby book illustrations to training in life drawing class through four years of art school. Whilst I found a certain natural ability and grew more confident with my improvements, I certainly don't believe you need to start early nor need to be naturally gifted. And even after many years, guess what? I don't draw now as I once dreamed I would. I thought I would be picture perfect photographic reality by now, and I'm not. And also, more importantly, I don't want to be. 
I love to draw with feeling and have the emotions come through. And whilst I do strive for a level of realism, I also prefer the natural uniqueness that emerges from an individual's lines, mark making and shading. I love drawing for the sake of drawing and I learn something new about drawing and about myself every time I do it. My biggest hope is that you can find a safe space in drawing to explore and experiment and above all have fun. There's no right or wrong ways. Make up some of your own rules if you want some. Do a challenge with other creatives online. Don't forget to do your warm ups. On days you really, really can't get into things, try swatching your art supplies and playing with them and doodles always help. I'll maybe share my favourite drawing books in a different video because otherwise this video will be far too long and I'd love to know your favourites so don't forget to leave those down there. And if you want more arty content, Content or behind the scenes content you can join me on Patreon where we've been doing some sketchbook dates on Zoom and all sorts of other fun things as well. So I totally love you to bits, thank you so much for keeping me company, try to keep your lights shining bright and I'll see you in the next one. Bye for now. Mm -hmm.